What's up everyone? Today we're going to do a fun problem which is called the threesome problem. And you may have heard this problem before, it's a very popular problem. But what we're going to try and do is we're going to take in a list of integers and then we need to return all of the possible groupings of three of those integers that sum up to zero. So as you can see in the example here, we have this list of six integers and there are two ways that we can sum up to zero. We can take both negative ones and the two and we can take a one, a zero and a negative one, a one, a zero and a one. So there are a couple ways we can do this and hopefully this makes sense how, what we're trying to do. So let's go ahead and jump right in. And the first thing we need to do, of course, is ask some questions. And this is a particularly important problem to ask some questions on because there are a lot of things that we want to make sure that we clarify because they could have a big impact on the difficulty of the problem. So the first thing we want to do is check whether or not all of the numbers in this list are unique or not. And if they are all unique, this actually makes this problem really simple. And I'll go through how we could, how that makes the problem so much easier in a little bit. But that's something that is very helpful for us to know. And another thing we want to know is whether or not the whether or not our output can have duplicates in it, or even what constitutes a duplicate in the output. So for example, let's just say that we have the input 000, zero like this. Then you would, for example, you could rearrange all of these zeros in different orders. So you could say, you know, have all six permutations of the zeros and then have six outputs that are unique, or you might say that those are duplicates because they're all the same number. You could also, it gets even a little more interesting if you add additional zeros to the input. Because now, what is this? Is this input, so let's say that this is these three zeros, is that unique from these two zeros plus the fourth zero? And we don't really know. So we want to check with our interviewer what the proper way to output this is. So going back, our first question was, are there unique numbers? And for the sake of this, we're going to say that they're not, especially you can see in the example, they're not all unique. So, and we're just going to, in this, what I'm going to actually do is take the, you know, hardest, hardest approach to this problem so that you'll understand how to do it in the most tough conditions. And then you can easily scale back depending on what the requirements are. And then we're going to consider this to be the proper output for this input. So any possible arrangements of those zeros is still going to be the same output. It's going to be a duplicate. So let's go ahead and think about how we're actually going to solve this. So the first solution, you know, we can, the first thing that I think of is very simple is the brute force solution, which should be pretty obvious how we would do that. We would have, let's just take our list from here as an example. And we're basically going to have three pointers. We're going to have i, j, and k. So we're going to start with i, j, and k. And then you know, you're going to iterate k through all of them. And then you're going to come back to here. And you're going to increment j. And then you're going to iterate k again. And you're going to go through all possibilities and check if the sum is equal to 0. And you know, that's uh, it would take. and cubed time, right, to actually solve that. So that's really not a super efficient solution and we want to see if we can do better. And so let's talk about some other possibilities. One possibility is we want what we can do essentially is we can break this down into two problems. So what we're going to do is we're going to break it down into a search problem basically where we're going to say, okay, I now have this first number and what I want to search for is any other pair of numbers that equals the inverse of this. And the reason I can do that is because I know that the if I can find the inverse of negative one, then those two numbers are going to sum together to be zero. So if I can find one, those two numbers are going to sum together to be zero. But I've only taken one number thus far, so I need to find two other numbers that sum together to equal that inverse. So what we were talking about before, I was saying how it would be very easy if we had unique values for all of the 
numbers in our list. And the reason why that's super easy is that we can just store all of these values into a hash set and then we can go through all pairs and search for their inverse in the hash set. And that'll take quadratic time. So we would basically have two pointers like this and we would go through all possible combinations like this and we would look up the inverse in our hash table. So for example here, our sum would be negative one and we'd look up one in the hash table and we'd get that. So we'd return these two pointers plus the one. And then we'd go on to here and here and so on until we get to here and then, or actually, yeah, until we get to here and then we get a duplicate. And so that's not really good. And let's also imagine in this case, what happens in our example where we had multiple zeros in our input. So we have zero, 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 zero and a hash set it just tells us whether the item is in the set or not. And so we don't know how many zeros are actually in the hash set. So this is gonna cause all kinds of problems. And in theory, we could do, we could modify this slightly. So we could take, uh, we could maybe do a hash list and the hash list would map that value to account of the number of times that occurs in the list. And we could do things like that and that would be, that would work and that's not a bad solution, but it's a little bit complicated and we have to keep track of a lot of things. So let's look at another possible way that we could do this. So let's start by, if we start, the first thing we can do is we can easily sort this list, right? We can do, it would be one, two, and I forgot the negative four. So we would end up with a list like this. And now what we can do is we can do our search and what we're, we're going to search for the same thing we're doing, we were doing before. We're going to search for any two numbers that add up to the inverse of the number that we currently have. So what we want to do is we can come down to here and we can create a pointer for the first one. And now we know that in the remaining items, we need to find any examples of no, any pairs of numbers that add up to negative four. And that's going to be actually, since we have this sorted, we can do this in linear time. And so that's really the thing that we need to do. We need to find this value in linear time. And then when we go through each of these, we're going to end up with a quadratic runtime. And for all intents and purposes, that's the best that we're going to be able to do. There's some research suggesting that maybe you could do it in sublinear time, but we don't need to worry about that because that's way beyond the scope of an interview. So what we want to do is we want to, we can be a little clever about how we search through this for two values. And we're going to do that. When we do that, we're going to be able to do this in linear time. So we're going to actually create two new pointers. We're going to create a pointer to the front of the remaining and we're gonna create a pointer to the end of the remaining. And what we can do here is we have, we can get the sum of these two, and the sum obviously in this case is one, and we're comparing that to, we want the sum to be four. And what we can say, which is pretty, which hopefully is obvious, is that if the number is too small, then we can, if, then we can potentially make the number bigger by incrementing this pointer because we're going to move up, we're going to increase the value of the smallest number. So we're going to increase the overall value of our sum. And on the flip side, if the number, if the sum here is too big, so if the sum was like five or something, we can decrement the end pointer and that's going to reduce our sum. So we can find by doing this and by repeating this, we can find all possible sums all possible variations or combinations in this remaining part of the list that sum to negative four or sum to four in this case. So that's what we want to do. And we're going to, there are a couple other things that we need to keep in mind. We're going to need to make sure that we're removing duplicates so, or avoiding duplicates. So when we increment this pointer, as we're going to do here, we're going to increment it until we see this value change because as long as this value is the same so let's say that let's say that this value is equal to well let's say that rather than negative four here we have 
Okay, actually, let's say that this value is equal to negative two or negative one. And then we come here and we decrement this to here, which is because each time we're going to get a sum that's too big. And so we're going to dec we're going to keep decrementing the end pointer until we get to here. And then this sum is going to be equal to negative one. So that's what we expect. And then we increment this pointer or decrement the other one, whichever we could do either one. We're just going to arbitrarily choose when it's equal because it doesn't really matter. But let's say we increment this pointer and then we decrement the other one. And now we get the same value again. We get the same output again. And that's going to be a bad thing. And obviously now this is not going to sum up to zero. But you get the idea of what the this should actually be here. And this would be here like this. But you can see that there's this issue where we might have duplicates if we don't do that. So let's go ahead and jump in and actually write some code. So we're going to create public static and I'm going to return the results as an array list of integer arrays because that's going to be easy for me to build up. And I'm going to call it three sum because that is the name of this problem. And it's going to take in an int array that I'm just going to call R like this. And now we're going to, so let's create, let's go ahead and create an array to store our results. So, or an array list to store our results. Call it results. And now, uh, and then I have to sort the array, the input array, because that's the first step, right? Is we, this doesn't work, this is not going to work, or it's not going to make any sense if we do it and the array is not in order, because when we do our uh, part at the end where we try and find, so when we go through and we try and find the pair that sums up to that value, it, our efficient algorithm only works because the list is sorted. So we're going to go ahead and say just arrays.sort r like that. And now we're going to go through everything. So we're going to do for int i equals zero, i is less than, and we want to do the length of the array minus three, right? Because once we get to here, so we're going to have our start pointer is going to be the second to last and our end pointer is going to be the last and we need to we want to make sure that we are accounting for this case and we don't we don't want to increment this further because then that's not going to make any sense so we're going to go ahead and say r dot length minus three and we're still going to as you can see because of this we're still going to hit all possible combinations so we don't have to worry about that and I plus plus. And now what we need to do is we want to first say that we're going to only account. Remember that we are trying to be cautious of duplicates. So when we, so our first variable, our first value is only going to be the same value one time, because let's look at this case here. So if we have this like, we're going to start like this and this is going to be we're looking for two values that sum up to one or negative of this value so negative one plus two sum to one and so our output is going to be negative one negative one two we're going to go through the whole thing and then what we're going to do is increment our may our first item pointer by one so we would end up here with here being our next and this is going to give us the same result as before. And that's a problem. And so what we want to do is we want to make sure that we don't, we don't want to set this I pointer to be either of these repeated values. So we can do that by saying, we're going to say if I equals zero, because we know that it can't be repeated if I equals zero, or I is greater or R I, is greater than r of i minus 1. And this way, we're only going to do this if 
we know that our i pointer is pointing to a value that was greater than the one that it was pointing to before. And this is going to ensure that we avoid the duplicates that we really don't want to get. So let's go ahead and do this. So we're going to go ahead and set our start and end. So I'm going to say int start equals, and that's going to be i plus one, right? And end is going to be r dot length minus one. This is pointing to the last element in the array. And now I need to go through all of the values. I need to go through all of these possible values to find what the combination, what all the possible combinations are that sum up to negative of this, or what all the possible combinations of, are, of these two are so that these three sum up to zero. So we can just do a while loop and we're going to want to keep looping through this as long as the start is less than the end, right? Because we're going to, we want to go through all possibilities. So while start, while start is less than end, we're going to go, we're going to first say that if the sum is zero of all three, then we want to obviously add it to our list. So our first case is if, uh, what is it? It's r i plus r start plus r end equals zero, then we want to add it to our results array. So we're just going to say results.add and I'm just going to create a new int array like this. So it's going to be r i r start and r end. And so that's going to add it to the array. And then we're still going to need to either increment the start or decrement the end, but it's not going to matter what we actually end up doing because we're just trying to get out of the current state that we're in or else our while loop is going to go forever. So we're just going to say that I'm just going to go ahead and do here if r of i is plus r start plus r end is less than zero. And then the other, I'm just going to do an else case that's going to, that's going to capture this where they're equal. So we're going to, in this case, what we want to do is it's less than zero. So we're going to increment start, but in the other case, it's going to be captured here. We're going to decrement end, but it's not going to matter. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to, so the main thing that we want to do is just do start plus plus. But if you remember here, what we had before is that when we were in this state, we don't want, for example, we don't want to increment it by one where it's still going to be the same value. So we don't want to end up with that sort of issue. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to, I'm going to do the same thing that I do here, where I'm going to keep going until I find a new larger value. Except unfortunately, it's not quite as easy to do here. So I'm going to have to actually say, I'm going to save, I'm going to cache the value. So I'm going to say current start equals start. And then I'm going to say while r start equals our current start. Then I'm going to increment start, right? Because that way we're going to have the exact same effect that we have in the other case where we're going to keep going until start is greater. But the last thing we need to do also here is that we also need to make sure that we're not violating this because we could end up going off of the end of the array in, so, in some edge case where like they're all the same number or something weird like that. You might end up with start ending up being equal to r.length and that would be bad because you would get an 
index out of bounds exception. So I'm also going to add in here, I only want to keep going until start while start is less than end. Because if start is equal to or greater than end, then I'm going to break out of my loop anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And then finally, I'm going to do an else statement for this, which is going to capture the case where, uh, where this is equal to zero, because we do want to move some pointer. So we're going to say else, and it's just going to be the opposite. So in current end equals end, and then while our end equals our current end and start is less than end. Then we're just going to do end minus minus. And finally, we have to return our results. And that's all there is to it. So let's go in and let's just look at a simple example. We can go through maybe this example here since we've been looking at it already and we don't have to go through the whole thing, but let's go through a couple iterations to see what's gonna happen. So we're going to go, we're gonna sort the array, which is what we have here. And then we're going to say in i equals zero and i is less than r dot length minus three. So i is equal to zero in this case. So start equals i plus one and end equals r dot length minus one, which is this. So while start is less than end and start is less than end in this case, so r i plus r start plus r n. So negative four plus negative one is negative five plus two is negative three. So this is less than zero. And so we're gonna to come to here and we're gonna say current start equals start. And so current start equals this one. And so while r, dot, r start equals r current start and start is less than end, start plus plus. So start and current start are the same. So obviously those two values are the same. So we're gonna increment this by one like that. And now still our start is now this and our start is this and our current start is this. So we're going to, they're going to be the same again. So we're going to increment I start again. And now we're here. And now our start and our, doc, our current start are zero and one. So they're different. So we're fine. And we're going to continue out of this and we're going to loop back to here. And so start is still less than end. And so negative four plus zero plus two is negative two, which is still less than zero. So we're gonna do this again and current start. And this time they are not equal. So we're just gonna increment by one. And then we're going to loop again. We're gonna say start is less than end and negative four, negative four plus one plus two is gonna be equal to negative one. So we come back here again and now we don't do anything. So we're going to say, uh, or we see start is still less than end. So we're going to increment start by one, but then now start and end are going to be equal to the same value. So we're going to come here, we're going to break out and now we're going to increment this and let's just go through one more iteration of the whole thing. So start is here and end is here. And so we're going to say that are so negative one plus negative one plus two is equal to zero. So we're going to say our we're going to say results dot add new array and we're going to add negative one negative one and two to our array, and then we're going to come down here and we know that it's not less than zero. So we're going to come and we're going to say end, and we're going to de decrement end by one. So, and these two are not equal, so we're going to just stay there and we're going to come back here. And we're going to say that r is, so we're going to say that start is still not less than end. So negative one plus negative one plus one is negative one. And so we're going to come here because it's less than zero. And we're going to say 
increment current start by one and again they're not equal so that's not going to cause a problem and then we're going to come back here start is still less than end and now we have negative one plus zero plus one which is going to be equal to zero again so we're going to come here we're going to add that to our results and then we're going to come down to here and we're going to increment or we're going to decrement and then whoops this somehow got messed up but you can see and we're going to now we're going to decrement end and again they are the same so we're going to break out and then this is going to get repeated for the rest but what you can see here is that on our next turn we're going to increment this pointer to here and what that means is that we're going to avoid repeating the one and negative one result that we had before and so we're going to avoid duplicates and so that gives us the response that we expect so this looks pretty good to me and the only other thing is that we do want to this is a problem where the runtime is important because we are really looking to get an efficient solution if possible so i just want to double check that our solution does run efficiently so what we have is we have this for loop that goes through all the elements in the array and then we have this while loop which goes through all of the elements greater than the element so we're basically having this take this outer for loop takes big o of n time and then the inner while loop takes up to big o of n time as well so the n being the length of the array so we have when we have a nested uh uh, o of n thing inside another O of n thing that's going to give us a quadratic time and that's what we expect and that's way better than the uh, cubic brute force time that we had before. So that's basically all there is to this problem. It's a little tricky but hopefully that all made sense and let me know in the comments below or on the blog if you have any questions and I will see you again soon.